in film, there's an art to introducing your characters. I'm Gat. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 character introduction scenes in movies. No one gives it to you. You have to take it. We're focusing on those cinematic moments that make some of our favorite characters known. How tall are you, Private? Sir, five foot nine, sir! Five foot nine, I didn't know they stacked shit that high. These are the scenes that drip with atmosphere and ache with tension as characters from all walks of life are brought to our attention. <laughs> Little surprises around every corner, but nothing dangerous. Don't be alarmed. Number 10, Bartholomew M. Quint, Jaws. 24 hours is like three weeks. Talk about making a quick impression. Quint, a veteran shark hunter, isn't one for taking nonsense. In fact, his first act during a frenzied town meeting is to scrape his fingers down a chalkboard, turning heads and ushering in silence. From there, the scene is something of a restrained character study. Quint doesn't yell or complain, he simply makes a reasonable case for why he should be the one to kill the film's titular beast. You gotta make up your minds. You wanna stay alive and ante up? You wanna play it cheap? Be on welfare the whole winter. And his departure is as respectable as it is curt. $10,000 for me by myself. For that you get the head, the tail, the whole damn thing. Number nine, Gunnery Sergeant Hartman. Full metal jacket. I am Gunnery Sergeant Hartman, your senior drill instructor. If the goal was to frighten the shit out of us, then this scene succeeded. And the first and last words out of your filthy sewers will be, sir. Do you maggots understand that? Early on in Full Metal Jacket, as a fresh batch of US Marines arrive for basic training on Paris Island, Gunnery Sergeant Hartman takes the opportunity to harden up the recruits. But until that day, you are pukes. You are the lowest form of life on Earth. You are not even human fucking being. His aggressive approach needs to be seen to be believed. I am hard, but I am fair. There is no racial bigotry here. I do not look down on kites, wops, or greasers. He doles out embarrassing nicknames, punches Private Joker in the gut, and even chokes a soldier for smirking. I bet you're the kind of guy that would fuck a person in the ass and not even have the goddamn common courtesy to give him a reach around. I'll be watching you. Hartman is, in a nutshell, the quintessential military man, for better or worse. Private Pile, I'm gonna give you three seconds, exactly three f***ing seconds, to wipe that stupid looking grin off your face, or I will gouge out your eyeballs and skull f*** you! Number 8, Han Solo, Star Wars Episode 4, A New Hope. Han Solo, I'm Captain of the Millennium Falcon. As much as we enjoy Darth Vader's march aboard the Tantive IV, Captain Solo's introduction felt a bit more dynamic. Fast ship. You've never heard of the Millennium Falcon? It begins with a bargain. Han talks to our hero Luke Skywalker and his mentor Obi-Wan into spending thousands of credits in exchange for a ticket off the current planet. It's a ship that made the Kessel run in less than 12 parsecs. However, the defining sequence is Solo's subsequent encounter with the bounty hunter Greedo. We get to see both the smooth-talking gentleman and the hardened smuggler in Han's character, culminating in one of his most iconic moments. P.S. Hand shot first. Sorry about the mess. Number 7. Hannibal Lecter, The Silence of the Lambs. Good morning. Is anyone else feeling goosebumps on their skin? We sense audiences had a similar reaction to FBI recruit Clary Starling's first encounter with the criminal mastermind Hannibal Lecter, a seemingly restrained man who slowly reveals himself to be something far more sinister. Closer, please. Closer. Everything from the close-ups on the actors' faces to the long pauses in the dialogue adds to the unease, fitting with the idea that Lecter is far from a common crook. That is rather slippery of you, Agent Starling. He's a force of pure evil, who's always one step ahead. Not that knowing that makes things any better. I ate his liver with some fava beans and a nice Chianti. Number 6. Willy Wonka. Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. It's a simple setup, really. The eccentric Willy Wonka stumbles out of his factory only to duck and roll in a masterful flourish, thus ensuring everyone of his whimsical charm. <laughs> However, 
What's not immediately apparent is the subtle contempt and sarcasm with which Wonka greets each of the five golden ticket winners. I'm so glad you could come. This is going to be such an exciting day. I hope you enjoy it. He may seem pleasant and carefree, but the scene illustrates something deeper about his character, his loss of faith in people. Augustus, my dear boy, how good to see you and in such fine shape. As a result, we rarely know if he's sincere, crazy, putting these children to the test, or all of the above. Delighted to meet you, sir, overjoyed, enraptured, entranced. Are we ready? Yes, good, in we go. Number five, Dr. Frankenfurter, the Rocky Horror Picture Show. Go in with style, this scene seems to say. How do you do, I? See you've met my faithful hand in hand. Our lead couple, Janet and Brad, seeking help with a flat tire, enters a castle hosting an annual Transylvanian convention. Put off by the odd trappings and disoriented partygoers, the couple moves to leave and comes face to face with Dr. Frankenfurter himself. I'm just a sweet transvestite. The musical number that follows, Sweet Transvestite, walks a fine line between being absurd and being amusing. By the light of the night, it'll all seem alright. I'll get you a satanic mechanic. It certainly helps that Frank is played by Tim Curry, who distinguishes himself as the Sir Lawrence Olivier of hamming it up. Why don't you stay for the night? And maybe a bite. I could show you my favorite obsession. Number four, Hans Landa, Inglorious Bastards. Je suis le colonel SS Hans Landa. Christoph Waltz has a knack for playing calculating characters. The Führer couldn't have said it better himself. Though he marvelously brought bounty hunter Dr. King Schultz to life in Django Unchained, it is Waltz's work in Inglorious Bastards that began his rise to stardom. Well, I'm very familiar with you and your family. I have no way of knowing if you are familiar with who I am. The film's first chapter introduces us to Hans Landa, an SS colonel seeking runaway Jewish refugees. You're sheltering enemies of the state, are you not? As Landa interrogates a simple farmer for information, we're led to believe the colonel is a fair but particular man. And then, Landa switches gears into ruthless killer territory, bluntly making his intent clear. Well played, sir. Well played. Number three, The Joker, The Dark Knight. Batman throttling criminals in 1989. I'm Batman. Bane decimating a CIA plane in 2012. It would be extremely painful. Batman films sure like their dramatic entrances. But none reaches the tense and unpredictable highs captured in The Dark Knight, especially since our first encounter with the Joker also serves as the movie's opening hook. What happened to the rest of the guys? It begins with a bank robbery, which starts to unravel as the clown masked wearing criminals involved systematically turn on one another. Then we get the reveal. The Joker was among the robbers, counting on their downfall. I believe whatever doesn't kill you simply makes you a stranger. Is it too late to run away screaming? Number two. Vito Corleone, The Godfather. For justice, we must go to Don Corleone. There is beauty in subtlety. Such is the case for Vito Corleone, an aged and tired head of a long-lived mafia family. Why did you go to the police? Why didn't you come to me first? On the day of his daughter Connie's wedding, Corleone is visited by Amerigo Bonacera, who asks him to put out a hit on the abusers of his own daughter. What do you want of me? Tell me anything, but do what I beg you to do. The entire scene is pivotal to understanding Don Corleone, both as the pragmatic head of a criminal enterprise and as a human being who recognizes the love of family. It's beautifully handled, a testament to everyone involved. That I cannot do. Before we reveal our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. I expect Someone like you. What 
did you expect? Two survivors. This is what she made us. I made my own choices. Hmm. You think you did. That's her genius. Who the hell are you? Nick Fury, director of S.H.I.E.L.D. Oh. I'm here to talk to you about the Avenger Initiative. Number one, James Bond, Dr. No. There's nothing quite like a bit of mystery in our introductions. Dr. No chooses to take its time in revealing its character's face, establishing the haughty attitude of all those present in this scene's poker game. Excuse me, sir, are you a member? No, I'm looking for Mr. James Bond. So, when the camera reveals our well-groomed hero, James Bond, and the now iconic tune starts playing, we get the sense that the character is the epitome of class and sophistication. Mr. Bond. James Bond. The point gets driven home with Bond's gentlemanly flirting with socialite Sylvia Trench. I have no objections. Even when Bond exits the scene, we can't get enough. May I um, let you know in the morning? Splendid. My number's on the card. Do you agree with our list? Yes! What's your favorite introduction scene for a movie character? Didn't mommy and daddy show you enough attention when you were a child? For more character-centric top 10s published daily, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. Am I going to die? Yes.